What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this React.js application styled completely with Tailwind CSS. I'm gonna show you how to install Tailwind, configure Tailwind, and then build out the whole layout with Tailwind CSS. So this is what we're building right here. Basically it's a mock after uh, Uber Eats. So we have a nice little nav bar here at the top with a side drawer menu that's accessible, not just on mobile devices, but on larger screens as well. Next, we have this cool little hero with a background image. We're getting all of our image from, images from Unsplash. Next, we have some collapsible cards. And you guys, everything is mobile responsive, you guys. And we're going to be using CSS uh, Flexbox and the grid layout for all of our layout changes. So notice you're starting to see some changes as we shrink down. So everything's going to display just beautifully on mobile devices. So next, we are displaying through rendering out all these images on the screen. And this is where we're going to add just a little bit of extra JavaScript so we can actually filter through all of our items here. So... Right now it's set to all, you can see everything on the screen. We're gonna be able to filter out different foods by category, uh, burgers, pizza, salad, chicken, and then back to all. So nice little hover effect too on these cards and notice the, uh, the little price tag on the bottom right of the cards. We're also gonna be able to filter out all these items based on price. So we can go from the least expensive to the most expensive and everything kind of in between here and then back to all again. Then we have to have some more uh, cards here at the bottom. So if you wanna see how I built this from start to finish you guys, then uh, follow along. I'm going to show you how we can build this from scratch in React.js style with Tailwind CSS. Let's get started. All right, you guys. So let's shrink this down a bit. And I'm here in VS Code. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and press the Control Back Tick button to open up the terminal in here. And um, I'm going to be using Yarn. You can use NPM if you want to. But let's go ahead and create our React application. So I'm going to say Yarn Create React Dash App. Then I'm just going to press the period here. And what that's going to do is just install it in the current directory. All right, happy hacking, that means it's ready to go. So what we're gonna focus on is this source folder to start off with, okay? So we're not gonna be looking at the public folder or the node modules or anything like that. We're just working out of the source folder. And what I want to do first is actually clean up some of the files here. Um, we're not gonna be using any of them today in this video. So this uh, app.css, the app.test, this logo.svg, the report web vitals and the setup test. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and remove those just to kind of declutter some and make it a little bit easier to work with. So. Next, what, what we should do is probably go ahead and install Tailwind. So let's go over here and I'm just gonna go to tailwindcss.com. And this is gonna be really easy, you guys. Just click the get started button. Then we're gonna click on the frameworks guide since we're using the create React app. Then we should have an option right here. So create React app. Then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna scroll down so you can actually see what we're doing here. I know my my videos, my pictures down there at the bottom. So first, what it wants us to do is create our React app, which we've already done. So next, we need to install Tailwind. And you can go ahead and select that whole line if you're using NPM. I'm using Yarn, so I'm just gonna collect, uh, select this uh, second part here. And I'm just gonna say Yarn, add, and then paste that in there. So that's gonna install Tailwind. The next, we're gonna run this npx command. And just to note, you guys, npx is different than npm. So just to throw that out there to clear up any confusion. So next we're gonna run that command. And what that's gonna do is actually it just created our tailwind.config file. And that's pretty important because here this next step, it wants us to add this, um, this little uh, string here inside of our content array. So we're just gonna paste it inside of our content array, just like that. I'm just go ahead and save it. It'll give it a nice little format. Then finally, you guys, at the very end, what we need to do is just copy this, this, uh, this few things right here and put it in our index.css file. So. We're going to go find our index.css and we can actually just um, replace all that and just paste that in there just like so. And real quick, you guys, while we're in, while we're in our index.css, I would just want to add some base styles. Uh, I'm just going to add something to our, our button styles. And this is kind of where we can add some global styles and tailwind. And the way you're going to add global styles is you're going to put the at sign to say layer, and then you're just going to say base, just like that. And then what we can say is uh, what I want to target is just the button component like that. And I'll say apply, and then whatever uh, base styles we want to apply to the button, we can do so in here. And what I want to apply here is, <clears throat> I'm going to say border, I'm going to say border black, and then we'll do uh, rounded XL, and then we're going to add some padding. So PX5 uh, and PY1. And what this is, we're giving a border, you guys, and this is all Tailwind. By the way, you see these little pop-ups right here, you guys? This is a plugin called Tailwind IntelliSense. So if you're new to uh, if you're new to Tailwind or, or, or if you haven't heard about this uh, plugin, I highly recommend you get it. If you're using uh, if you're using Tailwind, I think it's called Tailwind Tailwind IntelliSense right here, you guys. So basically, it just gives you uh, recommendations and kind of shows you what the styling is going to be. So save a lot of time if you're if you're using Tailwind. So and right here, forgot a dash there. Then we're saying uh, the borders are black, and then the rounded XL. That's like saying border radius. And then PX5, we're having some uh, some padding on the left and right. And then Y is on the Y axis on the top and bottom. So 
now that we have and that's all i'm going to do for the uh that's all i'm going to do for our styles here for our, our global styling at least so oh, i'm going to zoom in a bit there for you guys so next let's go back to our application here and let's go ahead up and um let's go ahead and start our app so we're going to start our development server i'm just going to say yarn start we can close this here on the right and what this is going to do yes we're going to start on a new server here so just could be 3001 and it should be just a blank white screen well we forgot a few things first though so let's go into our app.js here and i'm going to go ahead and delete all this code so yeah you're going to get some errors here um if you haven't deleted all this yet basically um react is looking for some things that we deleted so we can replace this with import react from react just like so and then we're also going to look in our index.js file we can get rid of this uh, report web vitals here by the way you guys i'm just pressing the command uh, b button to toggle that side menu there just so it's easier for you guys to to read and see so that should be all we need to to do right now we can close the index.js file so first off let's start with our our nav bar it's gonna be a lot of fun you can see we're having a lot of functionalities with our um with our nav bar here so now that we have tailwind installed let's go ahead and create kind of the layout for our project it's going to be really easy it's going to be really basic basically we're just going to have in our source folder i'm going to create a new folder called components here we go and this is where all our components are going to live so all of our images we're actually just pulling over from unsplash i'm not actually going to store them locally here in the application so i am going to have a data file and by the way i'm going to put this uh, link to my github so you can download that file and you can just use all the links to the to the unsplash images so inside of our components folder let's go ahead and create a, a file called navbar.js or .jsx. So um, .jsx is just, um, it's just like some JSX file here in React. So you can use a bunch of the shortcuts and I'm gonna use refce, by the way, you guys, that's an extension. So React Redux has seven snippets. It's just a plugin that you can download to quickly generate some uh, functional components, class components, and a few other things as well. So now we have our navbar, we want to go ahead and import that inside of our app.js. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to put navbar in here. And sometimes you guys, it'll auto import it. Sometimes not. Um, that's fine. All we need to do is just go ahead and just import it here at the top of our screen. So that's why we're getting our error. So what we can do is just import navbar from, and then we need to go to our components folder. And then we're just looking for the navbar component. So here we go. We have our navbar with our little text in there. So let's go ahead and get started with our navbar here, you guys. So what I want to do, I'm going to drop this down a bit. So what we're going to have, let's go ahead and I'm going to style this thing out and kind of add in the CSS here in, in, a, in a little bit, add in our tailwind here in a little bit. So this is our outermost container here. And we're going to have a, um, we're going to have like a container on it with about 1640 pixels. The inside here on the left, we're going to have a div here. And then we're using react icons. So let's just install that really quick. I'm going to open up a little side terminal. I'm going to say yarn add react dash icons, just like that. And it's going to be really quick. So for our menu button, it's going to be an icon called AI outline menu, just like that. And what we need to do, I'm just going to copy that so we can import it here at the top. So let's import, and this is the package that we just installed. I use this all the time. So from react dash icons, and then we need to put a little subfolder, which is AI in this case, just the little beginning of the menu there. So you can already see we have our, uh, have our little uh, menu there at the top. It's kind of small. So what we can do, add a little property here to sizing property. We just say size 30, and that's going to beef it up a little bit, just like that. So next it's looking good. I'm going to have an H1 here, and I'm going to say, see what we say, best eats, just like that. And I'm going to put a span around this here. Yeah, put a span around that like that, and we'll just paste that. Kind of cut that and paste it in there. Oh, nice little save. So everything formats. I'm using the prettier extension, you guys. So every time I save, it formats all of my code for me, which is pretty nice. So it's a nice little time saver. So inside here, um, what I actually want to do, let's kind of surround this whole thing in a div. And I'm just going to make some notes. Um, going to make some notes here. So let's shift that. let's shift that up. Go ahead and save. And this is going to be kind of like the left side here so left side and then just below just below this h1 we're going to have another div inside of this left left side here and what it's going to be right here is this little section right in here is where we're at so what we're going to say here inside that div we're just going to have two p tags we're going to have a what's that first one going to say delivery and the other one's going to say pickup so we'll say delivery just like that and then we're also going to have another side that says that says pickup 
go. And let's go ahead and kind of get, get some styles in there and then we'll come back here in, in a minute. So for this max width, so this we're gonna add, add some styles here in Tailwind. So I'm gonna say class name, just like that. And I want the max width, and we can do that by saying max dash W, just like that. And then you can actually put in like some, you saw some default values, you can say 3XL, 4XL, stuff like that. But if you wanna add in your own um, custom values, you can do so with some brackets. So I'm gonna add in my brackets. I usually like to add just my custom values here. And I'm gonna say 1640 pixels, just like that. I'm gonna say, um, MX auto for margin on the on the X axis on the left and right is set to auto. And then I want this to be flex and I'm gonna say justify between, and that's gonna say, the, that's the same as saying justify content space between. And then next, what we wanna do, we're gonna say items center, and then a padding of four, so P dash four. And you guys, Tailwind kind of counts in um, multiples of four. So four is actually gonna be one rem. And if you did a um, P dash two, that would be all oh, half a rem or eight pixels. So that's kind of how Tailwind works. It just counts by fours. So that's pretty easy to understand. So the next here, this little left side, let's go ahead and give this some uh, styling here. So, and the reason we're the justify content, there's only one div down there. That's why it's all stuck to one side. So in this div here, let's go ahead and give it a class name. And inside here, what we're gonna say is flex and then items center. It's gonna, it's gonna lay a few things out for us there. Perfect, there we go. Now for this div, we don't need anything um, our, around our um, around our uh, icon here. Or in fact, let's, let's just add a, a cursor pointer here. So we'll say class name, and then we'll just say cursor, cursor pointer, just like that. And then we're gonna use that button to actually toggle of our, um, our side menu, but we're gonna come back to that in a minute here. So next, let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and style this H1 here. So I'm gonna give this uh, H1 a class name. And for the H1, I'll say text to Excel. Then we'll say some, add some media queries. So right now, Tailwind is what you would call a mobile first approach. So all the styles you put in here apply to the minimum width. And then as you specify your breakpoints, it'll, it'll, it'll be, um, the, the breakpoints will be um, applied w w whenever you uh, type in the small, so let me let me just re-say that here. So basically, like I said, Tailwind's a mobile first approach, and then we can add breakpoints by typing small, just like that. And I think the, the small breakpoint is 640 pixels. The medium, which is gonna be specified by MD, is 768. Then the large, I believe, is like 1040 or somewhere around there. So what we can say, anything above small right here is gonna be text 3XL. And then we can actually do this once more if we wanna say medium, um, we can say medium, or we'll say, we'll say large like that text for Excel. And you can see as we're on smaller devices, we can get up a little bit bigger. So let's shrink that down, smaller, medium, and then larger, just like that. So that's how the, the breakpoints work here in Tailwind CSS, <clears throat> excuse me. So next, let's just add a little bit of padding here. I'm just gonna say PX2 for a little bit of padding on the sides of our H1 there. So unless for our span, wanna add, uh, make this a little bit bolder there. So I'm gonna give this a class name. We'll just say font bold, just like that. And then next, what we wanna do is come down here to our delivery and pickup. And this is gonna be pretty cool. So for our this div here that surrounds the, our P tags, let's give that a class name here. And what we can say here, um, we actually wanna hide this on smaller devices. So what I'm gonna say is hidden, and this is where our, our breakpoints come in, our media queries. Then anything above, what we can say, um, anything above large, when it's display it as flex. So that means we're, uh, doesn't look like we're at our breakpoint here. And if we look at their pixels, we'll see our, see here, our pixels on the top right are at 10. Where's our breakpoint at? So it's displaying and then right there. So yeah, a 10 looks like to be somewhere around like 1026 or 1024. So it's on the screen right now. So right now it's displaying large flex. And then we'll say items center and we'll say BG gray 200, just like that. And then we'll say rounded full, and that's gonna be the same as saying like border radius uh, 100% there. And we'll say P-1 for padding of, um, uh, it's gonna be like uh, four pixels, I believe there. Then text, we're gonna drop this down a little bit for our sizing text, we'll say 14 pixels. And you guys, we're just using the brackets there so we can add in our custom, uh, custom values. So everything is looking good there. Now for our P tags, let's give this a class name in here. Go. And for this, I'm gonna say BG dash black. So we get a little black background on our text there. Perfect. Now let's say um, text white, and then we're gonna add some padding. We're gonna say rounded full and then P dash two. 
there we go looking good already and then for this one down here let's just give some padding we'll just say p2 to give it a little uh, spacing over there so everything is looking good so far you guys looking awesome so <clears throat> next let's do our search input it's going to be our input right here and we're going to put that just below here i'll say search input just like that give us some space in here so for our search input it's going to be uh, let's add our div here have our div and then we're going to have our icon in here and i'm going to use ai outline search just like that and we're going to give this um let's go ahead and import that here and we can actually import this on the same line as long as they have the same little pretext there the ai and you can start to see it kind of pushed off to the side here that's our justify content working and let's add some size property here so i'm going to say size of 20 just like that perfect and then in here let's also add our input so I'm going to say input type of text is fine. And I'm going to give it a placeholder that says, um, we'll say search, we'll say search. I uh, can't remember what I put search foods, I think. So yeah, that's going to be good right there. Search foods. Perfect. Now let's give this some styling. So let's do this outer div first. I'm going to give that a class name. And then for this div here, we're going to say BG gray 200. I want that to be rounded full. So it's nice and round. And we're going to say flex items center and then we're going to say px2 just like that and then we'll say a width of 200 pixels by default okay and then as we get to a larger screen anything above small we want to do we have a colon there colon there so anything above small we're going to say width of we'll say 400 pixels there we go and then also i'm going to drop this down sorry i was trying to see off my cheat sheet here then anything above large will do the uh width of 500 pixels this is the only the one downside of Tailwind. So it's kind of like a can get a little bit messy with our class names and you can sometimes I'll, I'll kind of extract them and kind of put them up there at the top. So that's an option to do as well. But the amount of time you can save writing, um, writing Tailwind is just incredible. As you can see, you're styling everything very, very quickly opposed to writing out all of your CSS. So what we want to do next here is let's come down. That's all the styling we need for our div. So next we need to style our um our input and it's gonna be pretty easy here so let's just give our input some styling so i'm gonna say class name and first off i want to make the background transparent so that way you can kind of see right through it right there perfect then we're going to add to give a little bit of padding so i'm gonna say p p dash uh two and then focus because right now if you select it you can see this ugly box so let's get rid of that focus and that's just a focus selector outline none just like that so i'm gonna say width full as well so now everything looks good. You notice that is every, everything is displaying properly like that. So looking good, you guys. Um, and we could even just beef that up just a bit. Let's see. Yeah, it looks good right there. Perfect. So next, what we want to do is actually add this um, add this cart button like we have off to the side. So let's go ahead and do that next. I'm going to do that right here. And let's add, we'll say cart, cart button. Go. I like to put in a lot of notes here for you guys. So it makes it easier for myself as well. So for the button here okay, button and then in here we're just going to say cart just like that and we're going to use a react icon again so just like that and for this it's called bs fill cart fill just like that now notice since this one isn't a pretext with a bs we're going to have instead of ai we're going to have to add this on a different line here so import the bs cart fill from react dash icons and this, this one's going to be just bs like that so should be able to see our cart here. Yeah, there it is, perfect. And this is our base styling. Since we put this as a button, you're starting to see our outline, which we're gonna change that here, so don't worry about that. So let's go ahead and change that right now, give this a class name. And for this, I actually want the background to be black. I want the text to be white. So let's see how that looks, perfect. Then we want this to display as, um, so we want this hidden on smaller devices. So I'm gonna say hidden, then anything above, we'll say medium. We want it to display as flex and this is above the medium breakpoint so here it comes back and we'll do items uh, center and get that in there item center just like that and then py of two to give a little bit of padding a little extra padding so that's looking good right there now let's give our uh, we want a little bit of um we're gonna want a little bit of spacing in between our but and our icons there so we can just add this in here let's give it a sizing property as well of 20 and then for our class name We'll just say margin right, and we can just say two, just like that. So 
think that's looking good so far. Oh, let's add, change up this border radius. So we'll just add it right here. Border, or sorry, not border radius. We'll say rounded XL. Rounded full. There we go. Looks good. And let's open this up on larger devices. Perfect. So everything is working properly. So next, what we want to do is actually configure our mobile menu. And that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be pretty sweet. So let's just do that right here. Let's make a mobile menu comment right there for our notes. And for our mobile menu, let's start out here with a div. And so we want to have a uh, background overlay. So let's start. This is going to be our overlay. And uh, we're not going to have anything inside this div, but let's go ahead and style this thing out here. So and then we're going to come back and, and do our logic with our use state. So I'm going to give this a class name here. And I'm going to say BG, we'll say BG black. Then we can add a slash here. And this is going to, we can add some opacity. So I'm just going to say 80. There we go. And we want to position this absolute or say, we're going to say fixed. Fixed, and we'll say um, width full H screen, just like that. And we're gonna give it a Z index of 10. So yeah, there you go. And we'll say top zero, left zero, since it's positioned as fixed. So that's perfect. That's what we want right there. And we're gonna go ahead and style it out um, as it is right now, as it's gonna be active. And then we're gonna come back and add our, add our state and, and our logic here in a minute. So. Next after that, that's just going to be our overlay. And I'll put a little note there. This is overlay. And next, what we're going to have is our side drawer, side drawer menu, just like that. Okay. And for this down here of a div here and inside this div, we want this to display as we're going to give this class name. So we want this to be fixed and we'll say, um, top zero left, left zero width full. Or you know what, Let's say width, we'll say uh, 300, 300 pixels. So it just comes out just a little bit right there. So that's gonna be good right there. And we do want that to take up the entire width of the screen or height of the screen. So we're gonna H screen. And that's the same as you can see when we hover, it says screen 100% uh, viewport height. So that's what we need there. We want the background to be white. Let's add a Z 10 there for our Z index. There we go. And we'll add a little duration to give it a nice little uh, smooth transition of uh, 300. So everything is looking good. I like that right there. So next inside this, let's go ahead and like kind of give it some styles inside here. So let's go ahead and put our close button. So we want a close button there. So I'm going to use our, um, our react icon. That's AI outline close, just like that. There we go. And let's give this a sizing property. So I'm going to say size and I think 30 should be good. Cool. Now class name, let's go ahead and import that so we can get rid of that error. Let's come here and we can again add this on the same line since it starts with AI. So there we go. So down here for our class name, I want to position this as absolute. Okay. And we'll say right or top four. And that should just move it right there. Perfect. Let's give it just a little cursor, uh, cursor pointer so we can get a nice little hover effect. There we go. Perfect. So next, just below, just below our, uh, our button there, <clears throat> this is where we're going to have our nav. So I'm gonna have an H2 actually here first. And let's just say, um, kind of do what we did above was our best eats just like that. Or let's put our span in here, span and we'll say eats just like that. Now for our H2, let's give it a class name. And for our H2, we're gonna say uh, text to XL and we'll say P dash four. And then for our span, let's give it a class name of bot bold. Nice save, there we go. Looking good so far, you guys. Now underneath here, we're gonna have a nav tag, okay? Then an unordered list, and then we'll do our list items. And for our list items, we're gonna have um, an icon in here and then some text. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this here, for our list item, our first one, it's gonna be orders. We're gonna use something called TB truck delivery, just like that. And then we're gonna have, uh, this one's gonna say orders. Now I'm gonna go ahead and type all of these in and then kind of come back and, um, you know, let's do this to kind of save some time here. So TB duck, truck delivery, let's give that a size of 25. And then we're gonna give this also a class name of MR-4, okay? To give just a little bit of margin there. And then for our list item itself, I'm gonna give some class names in here. And it's just gonna be text, XL, PY4 for a little bit of padding, and then we'll say flex so everything displays side by side. 
So I'm going to go ahead and import just this one right here. And from react dash icons, and it's going to be TV. So let's make sure this is displaying properly. Oh, no, there we go. Perfect. So let's add just real quick to our unordered list. We're going to add some styling here and we'll say flex flex column. So everything's uh, displaying as a column there. And we'll say P dash four in our text. We'll say Ray 800. Oh, perfect. So that looks good. So now we're going to have, uh, so we have about, uh, looks like we have seven of these. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy these down and then we can kind of change them. So what we're going to do is see two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So see that looks good. And then, so we're going to have the heart with for favorites. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have favorites. Then next we'll say next, we're going to have wallet and then we're going to have help. And then we have promotions, best one, and then invite friends. So we'll say promotion ones. No, oh, and then invite. All right, so that's looking better. Now let's go back and change our icons. So this next one here is going to be. Let's see here. This one's going to be MD MD favorite, just like that. And we're, like I said, we'll come back and add these in here in a minute. FA wallet. There we go. This one's going to be MD help. This one's going to be AI fill tag. Then we'll have a BS, BS fill save. So fill just like that. Then for this last one, we're going to have FA user friends. There we go. Now let's go ahead and go ahead and um, install all these here at the top or import all these here at the top. So import this one has to be a new line because it's FA from react dash icons. FA, then what else do we have in here? We should still see our errors. We're gonna also have the FA wallet. Okay, then see MD, let's do that one. So import an MD favorite and then MD help. That's gonna be from, you should know these by now, right? MD, okay, just a couple left here. So we're gonna import, what's left? We're gonna see what's left here. Let's go ahead and refresh. So AI fill tag in, let's do that one here and add that here at the top AI fill tag and then BS fill save fill. Okay. You can add that right there. Yes. Fill save. All right. No, that was a little bit tedious, but everything is looking good. Cool. But it displays all the time. Now we don't want that. We want that to be responsive and actually just uh, toggle back and forth whenever we press the X. So let's go ahead and add some state. We're going to control that with our use state hook and react. So let's go ahead and import the use state hook right here at the top. Then inside here, we're going to use our state. We're going to say const. You can call this whatever you want. I'm going to say nav and set nav. The first one's a value and the second one's kind of like a function here. We want to set the default value of our state to a Boolean value of false. Okay. And then let's see, let's scroll to our, this is our outline menu. So we're going to select this div and whenever we click, click this div, and this is the, this is the bars menu, um, right? This is the bars menu right here that we're working on right now. And whenever somebody clicks that, we're going to have an on click event. So every time somebody clicks that, it's going to trigger this function and that is going to set the nav to the, we're gonna use the logical or operator to, um, <clears throat> to the opposite of what the current state is. So that's gonna, that's gonna change it from false to true. And next we want to do, we wanna come down here to actually our menu, right, sorry, right here for our mobile, mobile side here. Now for our overlay, we want this overlay to display only if our, uh, our state is, is changed to true. So what I'm going to do is actually let's do this. We'll say open up our brackets here. And this way we can actually type some JavaScript in here. That's what those uh, curly brackets do. So what we can say, if nav is true, we want to display something else. I just want to display an empty string, but inside here is what we want to actually uh, do if whenever it's true, there we go. So next <clears throat> that's looking good. So right now it's set to false. And if we go up here to true, if we set that to true, we should then see our overlay. And there it is. Perfect. So let's go back to false though for now. And next we want to do is uh, change this little side drawer menu to display on the, on the same thing. So where is our 
right here, our side drawer menu, okay? So what we're gonna be doing is actually just changing out the styling for this div here. So what I want you to do is go ahead and copy that, or in fact, let's just cut it out, okay? And instead of the quotes there, we're gonna use our curly brackets. And what we're gonna say, the same thing, if nav is true, okay? Else we're gonna display something false. So if nav is true, I'm just gonna pay up, oh, actually need to put that in quotes there. So I just wanna paste that in there. Else I'm gonna go ahead and put some quotes and paste that in there as well. But on this one, on the second one, on the else, instead of the left zero, what I wanna do is get rid of that and use our brackets so we can add some custom values. I'm gonna say negative 100%. So it's actually gonna be hidden off of the screen. So let's go ahead and click that. Hey, there you go, perfect. But we can't close it. So let's add a, um, a click event here to this button. So what we can say is just on click. And on click, you know what we wanna do? Just pass in this function here. We're doing a little inline function of, and we'll just change our nav state opposite of its current value. So let's have a look. Hey, there we go. So that is our nav bar, you guys. We can see that on full screens, <clears throat> like that. Toggles our overlay. We can slide in our menu from the side and then close it. So everything is looking good, you guys. Smash the like button if you feel like you're getting some value out of this. And let's move on to our uh, hero component next. So <clears throat> for our hero component, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and we can actually just close that down right there. Press the command B button to toggle our sign menu. And what I want to do is just create a new component, you guys. It's inside our components folder and it's just gonna be called hero.jsx, okay? So RFCE is gonna generate our functional component here. And what we want to do here is, let's see. So we're gonna have an image in here and then we're gonna have an overlay on top of our image as well. And then some text inside of that overlay. So let's do this. We're gonna have a div here and then that's gonna be like a little container here. And then here's gonna be our overlay just below here. So for our overlay, we're gonna have a div. And like I said, inside our overlay, we're gonna be having some content with an H1. And for this H1, it's gonna say, so it's gonna be two H1s. First one's gonna say the best, and then the next one's gonna say foods delivered. So this one's gonna say the best, but I wanna have a span here, the best, and then let's just copy this down and we'll say best foods that delivered, there we go. And we're not seeing anything right now because we need to just import this into our app. So let's say hero, just like that, okay? And then we'll import hero from components, slash hero there we go perfect okay so there you have it we can start to see our um starting to see our stuff there boom there we go perfect so i'm gonna go ahead and just i'm gonna shrink this down a bit you guys i wanted to keep it open on um for at least the nav bar so we can see our buttons that we're creating but now that we have those out the way i'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit for now um i just i want to make this as easy as possible for you guys to see i remember when i was doing a lot of tutorials on YouTube. It was hard to see um, the screen at times, you know, especially if if they weren't zoomed in. So I try and zoom in enough, you guys. Let me know in the comments if I'm zoomed in enough if, or if I need to do it a little bit, a little bit more. I'll try and do it more when I can just to make it easier on you guys. So that's all we need to do there. So next we want to add an image, and the image is going to go. Um, so the image we can put just below this overlay here. So I'm going to say image do like something like that so let's go grab our image you guys and i'm getting this from let's see i'm gonna type in this one i actually think i got from pexels so those are the two like image sites i use i mainly use pexels or unsplash i kind of go back and forth so pexels.com and i'm just gonna type in uh, food or foods i'm gonna try and find the one that i it was somewhere in here sorry i know you guys i can copy it over if i want to find that same burger <clears throat> Um, you know, this one looks fine too. So let's do that one. Might be look a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is just copy that. And just so you, you saw you guys, I just did the copy image address and then paste it in there like so. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So next, okay, let's string this down a bit and let's add our uh, overlay. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So next let's add our overlay, you guys. And we'll do that. Or let's add all of our styling here. We'll start at the top here. So for this, this top div here, I'm gonna zoom in a bit for you guys. So let's give it a class. Oh, not a callback. Class name. And for this top class name, we will say max width, and we're gonna keep it all consistent with 640 pixels, MX auto, and then we'll have P-4 so we can get a little bit of padding just on the size of our images to keep everything uh, just nice and consistent. Then this right here, I'm gonna give it a class name. <clears throat> and for this, we want this to be a max height, height 
of we're going to do 500 pixels for all of these and this one's going to be relative <clears throat> okay relative because we want this to be uh, positioned absolutely everything inside here is going to be positioned absolutely <clears throat> excuse me the image as well as this uh, this overlay here is next so let's give this a class name as well okay so class name and then this one is going to be like i said absolute and i'm going to zoom out a bit because it's going to be a little bit more styling so absolute we'll say width full height full and i want the see text to be text is going to be gray 200 it's going to be like an off white there and we'll say max height the same 500 pixels and then for our uh for our um, background, we'll say BG black, and this is gonna be the overlay. So we're using our opacity of, we'll say 75. So you can see our overlay there. And you know, let's drop that down. I'm gonna drop it down. There we go. So look, yeah, just a little bit lighter like that, 40. Now flex, flex column, because inside here, remember, we're gonna have our text in there. I'm gonna say justify center, so it kind of sits in the middle. There we go, perfect. Looking good. And don't worry about this little gap right there. It's going to change whenever we uh, add styles to our images. So for our H1, I'm going to hold down the option button right there, you guys. I believe it's an alt if you're on a PC. So that way you notice I can actually type in, in two spots at the same time. So just to save a little bit of time here. So for our H1, let's give this a class. I'm going to say PX4 text, oh, text, or XL. And we'll say anything above small. We're going to jump, jump up to text 5XL. Then medium, we'll do text, 6XL. Nice little breakpoints here for our media queries. This is how easy it is to add media queries, you guys. I mean, did you, you know how much how much longer this takes if you're actually writing this out in CSS. So this is so much easier. Sorry, this is gonna be text, 7XL. Seven, seven and then we'll just say font bold like that. So let's go ahead and save there. Boom, yeah, look, it's nice. Everything looks nice. And though for our uh, spans here, I'm gonna do the same thing, just our option button. And basically, I just want these to be orange. So I'm going to say text, orange, and I'm going to use 600. So maybe 500. And I remembered, actually, I don't want the delivered. I want to be that. There we go. Best foods delivered. Okay, perfect, you guys. That looks good. So next, what we want to do is actually style our image so we can just kind of change, fix that little gap down there and make everything responsive and maintain our aspect ratio as well. So for this image, we want this to be displayed. Um, so we'll say width full, max height. We're gonna do the same max height of uh, open up our brackets here, 500 pixels. That's gonna take care of that little uh, drop there at the bottom. But it does kind of just change our, um, our aspect ratio just a little bit. So what we can say is object cover, just like that. That's the one I like to use so it kind of maintains the, the ratio there. So now we notice everything is looking good. Everything's looking good, perfect, you guys. So that is a nice little hero section. Very, very easy there. So next, we're gonna play with our cards below there, starting to get some, starting to get into the fun stuff. So let's do that next here. So for our cards, we're gonna create a new component here and you can call this whatever you like. I'm gonna call this headline cards.jsx just like that, you guys. And then inside here, what we can do is just RAFCE. It's gonna get our functional component, okay? And <clears throat> so next, what we're gonna do for our headline cards, so we're gonna have, um, basically this is gonna be our, this outer, this parent div is gonna be like our, our, our container here. And then we're gonna have a card in here. So we'll have three different cards. So inside here, and you know, the cool thing about React, of course, is we can do reusable components and we're gonna do some reusable components, but not in this one, just cause it's not gonna be very much code. So for this div here, we're gonna have a div on the outline and then another overlay div, cause he's gonna have some little uh, overlays, um, little dark overlays on our images. So this right here is gonna be our overlay. There we go. Then let's have a P tag. And in this P tag, I'm gonna say, Suns, suns out. There we go. I want get ones out just like that. Go ahead and save, get it nice and formatted there. Then we're gonna have a p tag that says through. We'll just say eight twenty six, just like a little date there. And then we're gonna have a button here that says um, order now. There we go. Perfect. Now next, what I'm gonna do is actually just pull over this image here. Um, so you saw how I grabbed the images from Unsplash or from Pexels. It doesn't really matter. But um, instead, instead of just grabbing um, 
I'm going and grabbing one that, that kind of take a while. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And I'm going to put that just below. So the, oops. So this is inside this card, but outside of this overlay here. So let's grab our image tag. And I'm just going to paste it in there just like that. A little save and put a little slash in there. So that's all we need to do there. So next, let's go ahead and see. Let's get this on the screen here. So app and we'll just put headline card cards go and i'll do import headline cards from components yeah, there we go. okay perfect so we should start to see some stuff on the screen there it goes we need to get some styling in there so let's go ahead and style this thing out so for this outer container again we're going to use a max width of let's see 640 pixels go mx is going to be auto and we're going to be using the grid for this so let's add some little padding there first so like i said in py12 we can get some padding just kind of space on the on the y-axis to separate it a bit from our from our other components so this is going to be grid so i want to say grid and by default i want this to only be one column on mobile devices and then as we get above uh medium or large we'll say medium we actually want this to be grid columns three and this is the same as saying um in css like your grid template columns you know um 1fr 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 or repeat 3 1fr so whatever however you want to say it and then we'll say gap 6 to give it a nice little gap in between so as you can see everything's looking good there so next for this little card this outer diff let's give this a class name here and here we'll say rounded xl and we want this to be relative because we're going to have our, our image and our overlay positioned absolutely inside there so for our overlay let's get to that next for our overlay what we want to say is absolute say width full h full uh bg black and we're going to use our opacity here with our slash and for our opacity i think i did a 50 here on this one so there you go looks good and we'll say rounded xl so it kind of rounds out our um our um our background opacity background as well and then we'll say text text white so all the text in here is uh is white cool so that's all we need to do there. And then next for our P tags here, what we're gonna say on this one, let's see, class name. We want this one to be a little bit bigger than this second one that says through. So this one's gonna be um, font bold, okay? Text to XL. Then we'll say PX-2, then PT for the padding of top. Four, just gonna bump it down a little bit, perfect. And then this one here, let's give it a class name, just PX2. We'll keep it the same, just kinda, we just wanna space it out a bit. Oops. Gonna give it quotes there. There you go, perfect. Now let's do our button here and we're gonna put this at the bottom. So give it our class name here and we'll say border on this one, we're gonna say border white. It's already got our base styles. Remember, we're gonna add in a few other things as well. So border white, uh, BG white. This one's actually gonna be text black there. And we'll say MX2 just to give it a little padding and then absolute and then bottom four, just gonna put it right off the bottom there. Now um, our overlay is, uh, is is rounded off, but now we just need to do our image. And let's do that right now with the class name on our image. And this one's gonna be a max height, okay? Max height of 160 pixels. Anything above medium, we're gonna say max, max height of 200 pixels. I'm loving telling you guys, save so much time. I actually, Wrote out a little project and just some CSS the other day. You may have seen the video and uh, it just takes so much more time to type out all of that CSS, you guys. So object cover, by the way, to maintain our aspect ratio there. And we'll say rounded XL and that should be all we need to do. Perfect, that looks good, you guys. So next one I'm gonna do is just copy this down. And like I said, we could use some re reusable cards, but um, you know, in this case, it, it's not it's not really a ton of code. So, so I think this is gonna be just fine. And so, the, so next I'm gonna copy over this image. Like I said, you can grab, if you wanna grab another image from, from uh, Unsplash or Pexels, that's fine too. But I'm just gonna copy this over right here. And for this one, I'll say new restaurants, if I spell that correctly, um, added daily. There we go, perfect. And then for this next one here, for our last one, let's find out what we're gonna be using here. We're gonna have another image that I'm gonna bring over. And this one's just gonna say, uh, we deserve where we deliver desserts too. So let's paste this in. It's gonna be a dessert picture. 
There we go. Go to see that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And we'll say, instead of that, we'll say, we deliver desserts to. Let's see how that looks. And we'll say, tasty. Yeah, there you go. Tasty treats. Hey, there we go. So let's look at this. If we right click here and inspect with our uh, Chrome extension here, or sorry, our, our developer tools in Chrome, we can change this to a, an iPhone, for example, and we'll see everything here is displaying be beautifully. Make sure our, our mobile menu works. Everything is looking nice so far, you guys. There we go, good, Le looking good. Now let's open this up a bit more just to make sure everything is displaying properly. Yes, everything is looking good, you guys. Very, very nice, very, very nice so far. This is how easy Tailwind is, you guys, coupled with React. Very, very powerful tool, you guys, very, very powerful. So next, what we're gonna, we're gonna get into the fun part next, okay? So next, we're gonna do this uh, this menu, or the, all these food sections that we're rendering out, and we're gonna be able to filter through this with some extra JavaScript. So let's do that one next. All right, so let's jump in here. So what we wanna do is actually create a new component here, and this is gonna be a component called food. So let's go ahead and add that in there. Food.jsx, there we go, perfect. RFCE is gonna get our functional component and let's put this on our screen here. So we're gonna import it into our app, just like that. So we'll import food from components, food, there we go, perfect. All right, so you guys, so one thing real quick. So what I'm gonna do is actually bring in a, uh, kind of like a, like a JSON style uh, document here. So um, that way it's, it'll be so much easier. We're gonna access this as if it's, as if we're pulling from an API, okay? It's gonna be very, very similar. So inside of our source folder, outside of um, your components, so inside the source folder, outside of the components, I'm gonna create a file called data, okay? And then inside the data folder, I'm gonna create a file called data.js. And what I'm gonna do is just copy this over you guys, um, and then so you can see it here. So I'm gonna paste this in and I'm gonna zoom out real quick. I know it's kind of hard to see. So basically this is just an array. It says export const data. Data is what we're calling our array here. Then inside of our array, we have all of these, um, all of these objects here and each object has an ID, then has a name and then has a category and then also an image and our price. So what this is, it has, um, there, there are 16 objects inside of this array. There's four burgers, four salads, four chickens, um, and I think that's it. So yeah, four burgers, four pizza, four salad, and four chickens. So, and all the data in here is different. Like I said, I'm gonna post a link to my GitHub down in the comments below. So go to the GitHub and you can just copy then, copy in this information right here, straight from my GitHub, and you'll have access to all these. Basically, it's just pulling over images from Unsplash. So, and it just makes it really, really easy and kind of simulates uh, what we're, simulates the response we'd be getting if we were um, hitting an API. So that's why I chose to do it this way. It saves some time and you also get like some extra experience there working with like what you would be working with with an API. And there's two things in here you guys, you're gonna notice we have the data, which is 16, uh, 16 objects in there. And then down here, just below that, we have something called categories, you guys, and that has eight. And what that is, is uh, just this section down here with all these images and names. So just to make that easy on you, you guys, and also kind of get the uh, get the experience of how it would be working with an API without making like Axi using Axios to make uh, API calls. So perfect. So in here with the food, let's get on this one next here. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and style this thing in. So first thing we do, let's go ahead and import. We're gonna put this in curly brackets. We're gonna import our data from that file, you guys. So we need to put this in curly brackets and we exported, we did the export const data. So now we have access to this. We seem to import it from curly brackets from, then we need to go find it and it's outside of our current directory. It's gonna be in the uh, data folder, like I said, and then just data like that, okay? So um, mm, data does not match. Oh, okay. That needs to be lowercase, there we go. I think that's it, there we go, .js. Okay, so now what we can do is let's console.log, okay? Console.log data, and now, and we're doing this just above the return, but within, within the component, okay? And we should, if we look at our developer tools here in Chrome, go ahead and inspect and look at our console, we should see, there we have it, we have our array in there, okay? I'm gonna zoom in just a bit. Mm, close that, I know my 
images down there, but I just want to be able to see this. So, so as you can see, we have our, all of our information in here. If you click on one, you can see the name, the category, the image and everything, everything, all the information it has. So perfect. That's what we want to do right there, you guys. So now we know we're getting, we're getting our data on from our component. Okay. So next, what we want to do is kind of add in this, uh, this title here and then our, our our filter section here at the top so let's do that right now okay so what we want to do here next is actually add in our h1 here and our h1 is going to say top rated menu items okay just like that now below their h1 we're going to have a filter filter row here okay it's going to be a div here and then inside our filter row we're going to have a space here filter type okay be a div here and then so and then we're also going to have a filter filter price there as well okay gonna be a div so for our uh let's do this for our filter row okay so our filter row we're gonna have our filter type and then inside here i'm gonna go ahead and save that so inside our filter type we're gonna have a p tag for our price okay and i'm just gonna say filter type just like that then below the p tag we're gonna have another div here and then we're gonna have some buttons and inside the buttons, we're gonna have uh, all, we're gonna have the uh, burgers, uh, pizza, salad, and chicken. So let's do that. Let's say burgers, pizza, salad, and chicken, just like that. Let's say chicken, okay, perfect. And then, so that's looking good. And then just below here for our filter price, we're gonna do that next. For our filter price, we're gonna have a P tag and we'll say, filter price okay then we're gonna have some buttons below here we'll put we'll wrap these in a uh, in a div and then for our buttons we're gonna have uh we're gonna select those by price so let's just copy that down there go cool cool there we go and one two three cool. perfect so let's go ahead and that looks good so let's go ahead and style these things out um before we get ahead of ourselves so i'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick save so for this div keeping it consistent we're gonna do a max width Oh, max, I can spell max width of 1640 pixels. Okay. Margin auto. And then we're going to do um, padding. We'll say PX4 to get a little bit of padding on the sides to stay consistent. And then we'll say P12, um, PY12 for, for um, to separate, give some room in between the components like we've been doing. So it looks good here for our H1. Let's give this a class name. And we're gonna do text orange. And this is how easy it is to add uh, colors to you guys. If you want to do a, um, a custom color value, you can just say text and then curly brackets, and then you can put in like a hex code or for black or for white or, or whatever color you'd wanna use. But, oops, and, and for in this video, we're gonna use the text orange um, 600, should be good. So here we go. And then for, um, let's do font bold. We'll say text for XL then text center. So it sits right there in the middle of the screen. So, all right, that is looking nice there, you guys. So for our flex row, let's see if we can, can't really scroll up too much there. So for our flex row, let's go ahead and give this a class. We want this to be, we want this to be flex, flex column, then anything above uh, large, we're gonna set this to flex row. So we'll say flex row and then justify the between. So, um, so right now it's set to a column since we're on smaller devices. Once we hit the large breakpoint, which is about 1020 pixels or so we thought, so you can see it, um, it spreads out a bit. And I know my, my picture down there is kind of covering it some, but you, you can see what we're doing there. So next for the filter type, let's go ahead and give the filter type some, uh, some styling. So we don't need anything in that div. We can add for this P tag. I'm just going to say font, keep doing that font, font bold there. And I'm just going to, Beef that up just a little bit. And then I'm just gonna say text gray 700. So it just lightens it up just uh, just a bit there. And then for our div, for our buttons, let's give our buttons a class name. And we're gonna say flex justify between, and we want these to wrap. So we'll say that with, with, uh, with flex wrap. And um, let's go ahead and do our buttons now. So I'm gonna go, to ho go ahead and hold down my option button. I'm on a Mac here, we can type in multiple spots here. So for our class name on the buttons, um, on the border to be orange um, 600 and the BG, the background to be text, or sorry, BG orange 600, just like that. And then let's add some uh, some hovering effect as well. So, and we need the text to be white. So, um, 
Order orange hover. Or we want these to be. So let's add this. I'm gonna say text instead of BG orange. Let's move this to text orange. So that way it has a, yeah, it looks good there. And then we'll add a hover effect. So we're gonna use the hover selector. We haven't done the, that yet. So just, we can say hover, just like we do on the media queries or for the focus selector, we'll say hover. Then whenever we hover, we want the background to be orange 600 and the text to be white. But we need to add the hover selector for a text as well. Hover, just like that. So now as we hover, right, there we go, it looks nice. Um, but one more thing I wanna do you guys, uh, I wanna add just um, a little bit of uh, margin in between here. So we can just say, um, give that some space, M-1 just, uh, just for a little bit of spacing in between the buttons. So that looks good, okay, that looks good. So next, let's go ahead and do, I'm just gonna copy this down because we're gonna do the same thing, okay? So let's copy that for this P tag down here, class name, P tag is gonna be the same. And then um, for this div down here, uh, we are gonna put give a little, a few uh, styling here in this div. So class name, and what we're gonna say here is flex justify, between and we're gonna add a, a max a max um, max width here so max width of 390 pixels just like that and then width full there so it looks good okay perfect so I did I thought it looked kind of funny if it was spreading around the whole whole width of the screen so but let's go ahead and for these buttons let's just go ahead and copy that because we want those buttons to actually be the same as well last name well, let's do this we'll kind of just to save some time there oh there we go. There we go, okay, okay. So class name, we'll go ahead and paste that in. So perfect, there you go, there you go. Everything is looking good. So let's have a look here. So um, what I wanna do is go down below this bottom div, okay? And here is where we're gonna get into the fun part. What we want to do is actually uh, create another div here. And this is where we're gonna, um, this is gonna be our grid right here. And we'll, we'll, we'll say um, display images. All right, we'll say display foods. And then down here is where we're gonna map through all of our all of our data that we saw when we console logged our data from our from our data file. Okay. So let's go ahead and inside here, inside this div, what we're gonna do is like I said, we're gonna map through the foods. So let's add some state in here. Okay. So we could just say data.map, but since we're gonna filter, we're gonna actually add in a couple steps so we can uh, use JavaScript to filter through our items. So what we're gonna do is first add some state, okay. And uh, we can do that right up here. We can go ahead and just console log that out. And we'll say const, and we'll say foods and set foods. Again, you can call this whatever you'd like. And what I want to set this to, use state. And by default, we just wanna pass in the data, okay? So by default, we just wanna pass in data. It's giving us a little error. It's cool, we just need a import or use state hook there, okay? So um, here we are. So by default, we're gonna pass in uh, the data, but now we can just say foods and it's gonna grab our data. So foods.map, okay. And then it's gonna take in an arrow function here and we're gonna take in a couple things. I'm gonna say item, and this could be whatever, uh, um, a, a name of your choosing. I'm just gonna say item. And then also we need an index. So you can just add in index right there, or you could just say item.index, either one's fine. So it's taking in an arrow function. And since we're gonna be rendering some things out on the screen, we're gonna use the parentheses there. And inside here, we're just gonna render out a div, just like that. And then inside this div, um, we can start out with a, with an image here. So, um, and inside here, we can actually access our, our values. So for this one, I'm gonna say uh, item, because we're grabbing what we're uh, naming each item as we map through them. So item dot uh, name, because this is our name here. So its name should be double cheeseburger. And this is just the alt tag on our image. And then we're gonna say item.image here to get to get our images here. So let's get rid of those uh, quotes there. And we'll say, use our curly brackets, item.image, just like that there. And now you can see we have a bunch of images, 16 images, every image in our data file that we're mapping through on the screen. So for our index there, React likes to, likes to um, Throw some errors if you're not using index here. So we're just gonna say key, just like that. And we can just say index, just like that. So that's all we need to do there. It would be all the same if you could say key uh, item.index, but th this works fine too. And it's probably, just, or item.id, because it's the ID. It, 
React needs a, a unique ID. So this is just a little bit more easier to read and a little more user friendly there. So now that we have our image displaying, let's go ahead and get these uh, styled looking right like they do on this page here. So, so below our image, what would we wanna have? We wanna have a div here. Then inside this div, we're gonna have a P tag, all right? And this is gonna say item.name because we want the name in there. And then after that, we're gonna have a another P tag, and this is gonna be our orange, uh, our orange little dollar sign in there. So, and I'm gonna put this inside of a span, and I'll show you why here. And for the span, we wanna say item dot price. And remember, the price is just not actually, uh, it's not actually integers, but just this little string of the, the dollar signs. So perfect, that's looking good. And that's actually all we need to do. So we can go ahead and save that and get it nice and formatted. Um, let's go ahead and actually style this thing though. So I'm just gonna zoom in a bit. So zoom in when I can, so it's easier for you guys to read. And we're gonna be using the grid layout for the, for our images here. So I'm gonna say class name, and we're gonna say grid, and we want this to display by uh, grid columns two by default, then anything above large, we'll say grid columns um, four, okay? So anything above the large breakpoint, it's gonna jump to four columns, so. All right, so next what we wanna do, we wanna add this, give it a little gap here, okay? So I'm gonna say gap uh, six, and if we hover over that, we can see that it is 1.5 rim, so 24 pixels on our gap there, and just a padding top of four, just to give it a little space right below our, or below our, um, our filter types there. So that looks good, you guys. So next, let's go into our, uh, our div here, okay? And this is our actual card, right? This is our actual card div. So let's give this a class name. And inside here, I'm gonna say border, give it a nice little border. And then I wanna say shadow large. Look, that's so much easier than saying box shadow and all the, you know, than all the four different values. And you can see, so you have a, a this is shadow large. Uh, I believe you can do two XL. If you want a, a different shadow that you can see some changes, you could do shadow small. So um, like I said, I'm gonna use shadow large. I think it's a, that's a good point in there. And then whenever we hover, I'm gonna use a hover selector and then we can just say scale and I'm gonna say 105. So whenever we hover on this, you can see a little bit of a nice, uh, it looks a little bit jumpy, but it's looking, it's scaling. So let's add a duration of 300 so we can um, give it a nice smooth transition. There we go, perfect. So looks good. Next, uh, let's take care of our images here cause they look kind of funky. Um, I'm gonna style that right here. So for our uh, class name on our images, I'm gonna say with full, then I'm gonna say a height of 200. We need to put this in curly brackets since it's a custom value in Tailwind. And we'll say object cover, cause that jacks up our aspect ratio. Object cover is gonna fix that. Rounded top large. So that's gonna round off the top there. Perfect. So everything is looking good, you guys. Looks good, looks good. And you know, um, Let's see here, we have the rounded, make sure this this here is rounded as well. I don't think I added that on our cards because that looks pretty, yeah. Let's add the rounded large as well so we can, uh, on our cards, we just put that in there, rounded LG, and that'll give us a nice little rounded bottom there. Perfect, perfect. All right, so let's zoom that back out. So everything is looking good there, you guys. Nice, nice. So let's go ahead and style, um, for this down here, I'm gonna give that a class name and we'll probably just give this a little bit of uh, padding here. Let's, let's display this as flex and then uh, justify between, okay? Then PX2, there we go, PY4. Let's see how that looks. There we go, perfect, all right, looking good. Now for our item name, it's our name there, like double cheeseburger. So we'll give that a class name and for our item name, I'm just gonna say font bold. Perfect. Now for our span here, I'm gonna give this a class name. Mm -hmm. And for our span, I'm gonna say BG orange 500, text white, P dash one to give it a little bit of padding. Then we'll say rounded full, okay? Now, the reason I used a span, if we used, um, if we used, uh, if we put that in on, on the P tag, since it is a uh, inline element, it would display a little bit funky whenever we, um, whenever our breakpoints changed, or if it got kind of like smushed up, then it would display a little bit funky. So that's why we're doing that right there. So look at that, you guys. Everything is mobile responsive. Look at that. Let's just have a look and see how it looks on the, uh, on a, a mobile device. So we're on an iPhone, for example. Let's have a look. 
Look at that. Looking good, you guys. Look at that. Oh, each child in a list must have a unique key prop. I thought we did that. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. So, yeah, everything is looking good, you guys. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, we're getting an error in there for some reason. I thought we added in that key property there. So, whoops. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, key index. Why are we still getting that error? Oh, okay, so we just need to re refresh. That was all. So refreshed, and now the index is gone. But yeah, that's a good example in ReactJS. If you don't have that in there, like I said, if we go ahead and delete that and refresh, you'll see that error is going to come back. So or it should come back. Yeah, there it is. So should li a unique key property. So let's just uh, undo that, and that should go away again. All right, you guys. So now is the fun part. Let's add some JavaScript in here so we can actually filter through these things whenever we click on the, the corresponding button. So how we're going to do that, we're going to use that with a filter method. The filter method is just an array method in JavaScript that we can use. So just to recap right now, we have our state. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So we have our state that we're mapping through. Okay. In our state, we're just passing through data, right? So that's all we need to do there. So we're going to add some functions in here. So this first one, we're going to say filter. We'll say filter type burgers, pizza, uh, et cetera. Okay. All right, so what we want to have here is just an arrow function here. So I'm gonna say const uh, filter type is what I'm gonna call it. Like I said, it's gonna be arrow function and take in a category, okay? And just to show you the category is what we're getting. That is right here, the burger, pizza, salad, everything like that. So that's where we're getting the category. Then now in here, we want to set the foods, okay? This is our state. We're setting our foods state. And here is where we're gonna set data dot filter okay and our filter thing here is going to take in an arrow function here so it's going to be i'm going to say item okay just like that and then we want to return item dot category explicitly explicitly equal to category just like so so i'm gonna go ahead and save that get it nice and um nice and formatted there so our filter type takes in the category it's updating our food state to the filter using the filter array method there to the item.category. We're making sure that the category is gonna match the category we pass in. So that is perfect. Now what we need to do is add our other one, our other um, our other function here that we're gonna filter by price. So we'll say filter by price. And inside here we'll say const filter price, okay? This one's gonna take in price. Then we're gonna set our foods to the data.filter, okay, and say item. And then we'll just say return item.price this will be equal to price. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Perfect. So that's all we need to do for our functions. Next, let's go and edit our buttons there and add on click events to our buttons so we can hook up our buttons to filter whenever we click. So for our buttons here, this is the first one, our, our all button. And this is going to be just a little bit different that since uh, from the others. So inside here, we're going to set up a function in here. And what we want to do is set foods here for data, okay? So because whenever we select the all, we want to display all 16 objects inside the array. So, and that's where we're going to set that to data. So for the next one for burgers, okay, let's do a long click. And this one, we're going to add our function here. And what we want to say is set foods. And, um, <clears throat> sorry, we want to run filter type here, not set foods. So filter type, okay? So in the filter type, and right here, we're passing through burger, okay? I think it's just, yeah, burger. So perfect. And then, so for this one, and this is for the uh, pizza one, we'll say at our here, filter type, pizza, okay? And then our salad, we'll have one click. Salad. And for our last one on the chicken. Okay, save that, it gets nice and formatted. Now this should work. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna click on something and see if it filters it. So, hey, there you go. Let's, let's drop this, let's get rid of that actually. So I clicked on burgers, let's click on the pizza, on the salads and the chicken. There we go, awesome you guys. So let's do the, uh, the price one next. So let's go down here. And okay, so for uh, this is for the the most uh, the cheapest one here. So it was like on click, and then we want to filter oop, filter price. There we go. And this one's just going to be little quotes right there. 
And let's just go ahead and copy that. So I can save a little bit of time. Okay, say save, nice and formatted. And we'll change this one to two, right? Three. And just to be clear, you guys, what we're doing, we're passing in right here, we're passing in either the um the price or the type, and we're taking that in here in the category and also the price. And then when we filter through it, we're just setting each um each uh, filter item to item, or you can say value or whatever you want to use. Items pretty uh pretty uh, standard use there, and say item dot category is equal to the category that we pass in. So that's how it's working. Let's see if our pricing is working now. So click on price. There you have it, you guys. We're able to filter through all of our pricing. Now let's see if we click the all. Does it set back to all? Which it does. Awesome, you guys. Yes, yes. Smash like button if I get some value. And let's take care of this. Um, let's take care of this last one here, okay? And the last one we're going to do is called category. So let's go into our components here. We're going to add a new file, a category, just like that. JSX, okay? So RAF CE is going to get our functional component. And let's uh, we can close. Um, let's keep that open for now. We'll close the hero and the food. We don't need that. So I'm going to look for the app here and let's import category. Just like that, okay, and then we'll import components. Whoop. Yes, components slash cat. Okay, perfect. So now we should see our category just down there at the bottom. Okay, so for our category, it's going to be pretty easy. So we're going to have an H1 here that says, uh, see, top rated menu items. Okay, and then just below the H1, we're going to have a div, and this is going to actually be our, I'm going to give it a little there that's what it's going to be inside of our divs there so we're going to use the grid for that and then um inside here we're going to map through like i said just like we did with the data we're going to map through all of our categories as well so if we look at our data um file here we have our data array at the top and if we scroll down we have a categories array with uh, eight objects in there with the id name and image so let's do that right here in our categories here so let's pull in import remember we have to import this in curly brackets and we're looking for cat stories from and then we're going into the um data the s okay and again let's just go ahead and console.log um categories and we can just make sure that we have access to it in here okay so if we open up our developer tools yes you can see our array with only our eight items in there perfect okay so we have our categories in here so this is our div and inside the div we want to map through everything so let's just say, open up our curly brackets here and we'll say categories, categories dot map, okay? And then inside here, I'll just say item just like that and then map through it, oop, gotta use our uh, our parentheses there since we're mapping through, returning some data in here. So div, div, okay? And again, we let's add our index. So index, e index, just like that so we don't get any errors. Now inside here, what we want to have is an H2, okay? And our H2 is just gonna be the item dot name, okay? And then we're also gonna have our image. So let's get rid of that and just say item dot image. And we can say for our alt tag, just make it nice there, item dot name, perfect. And let's go ahead and style this thing. So for our outer, you can see that we have all our data on the screen. So it looks good. Let's go ahead and give this a class name. Keep doing that callback. So class name, what we're gonna say max width 1640 pixels, and we'll say PX4 um, and then PY of uh, 12, just get some padding in there. So for our H1, let's give it a class name and we'll say text orange 600 font bold text for Excel. And guys, if you're using a, a larger project, you could do, um, you could add in some global styles to make this easy for the H1, for example, you could actually add all these in. So every time we used a, a heading uh, one tag, you, we'd ha already have all these styles typed in, but that's all right for this video where, you know, it's gonna be, it's not a very long video, so it's easier to do it this way. So this is gonna be the grid. So let's do this uh, grid grid columns two, and then anything above um, medium, we're gonna switch over to grid columns four. So right now it looks good once we're on a medium break point. Oh, no, we're on a, a larger break point. But if we shrink this down, you should see, yeah, it jumps down to two there. So 
All right, so two, four, and let's give this a gap of, um, you say gap six, and then just give it a little bit of padding underneath that uh, H1 there, perfect. All right, so we have our index there. So let's give this class name, and this is actually gonna be the card here. So we'll say BG gray 100, it's gonna be pretty light. You're gonna probably barely be, oh, there you go, so it looks all right. So um, next we'll say rounded uh, large P4, we want this to be flex, then justify between and we'll say items center okay wrap this line for you guys all right item center and then um yeah that's looking pretty good there so our our um our image is a little bit big so we're going to shrink those down a bit too but for our h2 let's give this a class name uh, we'll say uh, font bold and then text xl but only on so only above on smaller devices, there we go. So for our image, let's give our image a class name here. So class name, and then let's say W-20. And this is where we don't have to add, um, this is if you want to actually use the um, the pixels here. So like I said, it goes in multiples of four, so 20 uh, divided by four would be five. So that is five rim there. Um, and you know sometimes it's just easier to, to, to do it that way. So that looks pretty good right there, you guys. Um, now let's go ahead and save this and let's see how it looks on uh, mobile devices. Let's have a look at like for, you know, an iPhone, for example, I think that looks pretty good. Perfect. Perfect. Let's scroll up to the top, have our hover effect here. Well, we're on a phone here, so no really hover effect. So let's see if we can sort through our burgers. There we go. Burgers. We'll sort by price. Perfect. You guys, everything is looking good. Everything is mobile responsive, you guys. All right, let's lope, open this thing up wide screen here. All right, you guys. I think that can, whoa, no, no, no. Let's fix this. Something's not looking right. That's why we like to double check. So um, looks like I just can say M auto. I should take care of that. All right, you guys. Looking good there. I'm glad we caught that. We can filter through all of our foods here. Go back to all, displaying all our foods. Smash the like button, you guys. I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out some more videos in React, Tailwind CSS, and Next.js. So thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the next one.